Hi everyone, it's me, Abdullah Samia. I was thinking about the daylight hours and how, you know, it's now getting, it's now coming up to uh, November and it's winter and the days are much shorter here where, where I live in Canada and, you know, around five o'clock, you know, you're, you're about to go home and it's already pitch dark. As a Muslim, you know, I had to pray. You pray based on the daylight hours, so... Um, during during winter, you have to like rush to catch all your prayers because you have to finish one prayer before the next one come. The time for the next one comes. So, so typically, um, you know, you when when you're in summer, you have the whole day, and you just have to do maybe one prayer at work. But in winter, it's it's a lot more. You, we're talking like um, you ha- you might have to pray two or three prayers at, at the office just to you know just to get uh, get them done on time. And um, it's interesting, like, you know, if Islam is from God, it's interesting that God made such a such a rule that it's so, you know, some people, especially people in the Middle East, they have it pretty easy in the sense that it's pretty stable and anyone living close to the equator, they're, they're, um, they would have a very fixed uh, schedule. It wouldn't change much throughout the months. So, you know, whether it's winter or summer, they have a pretty fixed schedule. The The prayers are spread out, out nicely. But if you're living anywhere up north a little bit or, you know, a little bit away from the equator, then, then the, the change becomes quite drastic where you can barely make it in time just to do your prayers. But then in summer, you have it easy. You know, also the other thing is uh, I used to wonder, you know, because you're also you're obligated to say all your five prayers once you hit puberty. And... um that's like maybe 12, 13, something like that. So I, I asked my friend, you know, because his daughter was um, just started praying and she had to pray now all of her prayers and he was a very religious Muslim. And I was asking him, he's a good friend of mine. I said, what do you do about, about school? Because even me as a teenager, I used to have a tough time when with the Isha prayer, which was almost like 10, 30, sometimes getting close to 11 o'clock. Like, how, how does she pray that and then go to school on time? Because school, you know, you have to be up by seven o'clock in the morning and she's a kid. Kids, you know, kids need more sleep than that. And he used to say, well, you know, we homeschool her so she can just sleep, wake up whenever she wants. And that way, you know, she prays in the morning, Fajr, three o'clock in the morning. But, you know, for the for most people, it'd be very really difficult, like praying 11 o'clock at night or even 1030 and then having to wake up for Fajr at like three or four thirty in the morning and then go back to sleep and then wake up at seven and then go to school. It's quite challenging. I mean, in, in like I said, in Arabia, it would have it would have been much easier because you wouldn't have had this drastic schedules like this, like we have in summer here. And even for fasting, the it goes by the daylight as well. So you know, I have a cousin um, and some family members that that had to fast almost twenty hours in Ramadan because in Alberta, you know, it the the fasting ends around ten o'clock in summer. It's, it's quite it's quite insane having to do twenty hours fast now. Did God intentionally make this make it this way so that you know a huge chunk of the world's population, for example, Norway and you know parts of Canada, UK, they all have to do twenty hour fasts in summer, whereas in Brazil and Australia they're doing like eight to twelve hours, which is like actually much much nicer, right, uh, and much more reasonable and easier to do, and you know you can focus on your other worship rather than just trying to survive from lack of food and water for the entire day. And um, it's interesting that even the um, the beginning and end of the month, you know, it's it's done based on a lunar calendar which with the moon sighting. So Prophet Muhammad said, you know, ca- count twenty nine days, and then sight the moon. If you see the moon, then you know the month ends in twenty nine. If you don't see the moon, then it becomes thirty days. So it's either twenty nine or thirty days. But there's so much confusion because at one point, you know, the moon sighting was local and everybody knew that, okay, well, we see the moon and we start fasting and we don't end fasting. And someone else, someone else in the world, they may have a different schedule because they may not have seen the moon till the next day or their schedule may be off. So you actually have a, you have, you actually have a system where different people have a different calendar in different parts of the world. So in order to kind of fix this, once, you know, global communication came about, people started saying, well, we can go by the global sighting now. Anywhere in the world, the moon is sighted by two, two adult men then, you know, we can use the global sighting and we can start fasting the same schedule as them. But a lot of people in the world still go by local sighting, including me. I used to believe that the local sighting was the best one, most authentic based on the Quran and Sunnah. 
And uh, this is confusing because then you have local sighting. Now you have global sighting. You also have some people that think you should go by Saudi, especially followers of Hezbo Tahrir and followers that say that, well, Saudi, we use Saudi for Hajj. We might as well use Saudi for um, for Ramadan and other months too. So they go by Saudi. So you have a Saudi opinion. You have an international opinion. You have a local opinion. A lot of confusion for a divine religion that, you know, God could have seen this was going to come and could have just made it easy and, but instead, it's very specific, you know, moon sighting, you have to see the moon and, you know, then you have to try to get out of this. Now, there's a fourth opinion where people say, well, you can go by calculations and when the moon is supposed to be visible based on astronomical data, astronomical data, we can actually start fasting based on that. But a lot of people don't like that opinion because it goes against the words of the prophet to sight the moon. So, you know, you have to do these like mental stretches in order to come up with these other opinions. And, you know, for a divine religion coming from God who knew what would happen, it seems strange that he let such a thing happen and he, and he created his religion in such a way that, you know, you'd have some people fasting 20 hours times 30 days and some people fasting 12 hours times 30 days. Is, is it truly from God? Did God truly come up with this? Did he, did he see this? And it's just something to think about, you know, like uh, why, something, why is it that, that there's such a discrepancy and these small things, you know, like people like Eskimos and people living in the north, you know, uh, aboriginals. Um, how would they, you know, practically speaking, like, why do they have to do double the effort of someone living? And even in, in, in winter, it's the opposite. The prayers are all crammed together. You know, one more quick thing I just I wanted to mention is it's, it reminds me of the hadith where Prophet Muhammad said, you know, in the last third of the night, Allah comes down to the lowest heaven. Now, it's strange. If you know how any if you know how, you know, time zones work, it's always night somewhere in the world. So what does that mean? Allah is always in the lowest third of the night, always in the lowest third of the heavens close to his worship, uh, worshipers so he can hear the them praying to him and answer their prayers. Like it doesn't sound like, you know, Muhammad Prophet Muhammad understood this when he said Allah comes down to the lowest heaven every night. How do we understand that? And so, you know, people do understand this in different ways, but the literal understanding, it's nonsensical because it means, it, it almost makes Allah sound like a yo-yo that goes up and down. And how does he go down if he's always, if it's always nighttime? Like right now, it's not, it's daytime over here in Canada. It's nighttime somewhere else in the world, maybe in China. So does that mean Allah stays in the lowest heaven? You know, it's, 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 Things like this make you wonder, is this truly from God? Or is this somebody that's just going based on the understanding of the will that he had? Anyways, I, I went too long. I didn't mean to go this long. Just something to think about now that it's winter. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.